students let us start our new session of chapter 14 oscillations now let us understand practical approach present in oscillatory motion in simple harmonic motion which is a damped simple harmonic motion damped harmonic or damped oscillations it means the energy contained in a system dissipated continuously it gets reduces continuously so based on that the amount of oscillations get eventually reduces and at one end it goes to zero so here this dissipating forces are available in the form of frictional forces as over here you can see in the diagram from the rigid body one spring is connected another end of the spring which is connected with the block initially while we are providing a motion of that block so it is uh, oscillating with its a maximum frequency even for certain time duration the simple harmonic motion is available constant oscillations are available now due to the surrounding medium due to the air particles friction force is generated onto the block on the spring and eventually its speed gets reduces and at one end it goes to zero and carried out one position consider as its a mean position that is denoted over here as o here due to that oscillations the angular frequency is generated which we have denoted as omega equal to under root k by m here due to this frictional force that dissipation of the energy is available which generate a damping force onto the object this damping force depends on the nature or the particles present in surrounding medium for example if we are taking instead of air the liquid medium so in that liquid medium the damping is greater it means the oscillations gets reduces earlier compared to the air and dissipation of the energy is faster than air so here how we can say that damping force is directly proportional to the velocity of that particular object or ball so here as we can define fd that is damping force directly proportional to the speed or velocity of the ball this damping force acts opposite direction of the displacement or the velocity of the object that's why by removing the proportionality we are keeping a constant b value with its a negative sign b itself is a positive constant or positive value and here the negative sign defines that this damping force is acting on opposite direction of the motion this constant b depends on the characteristic of the medium based on its internal resistance type of the medium and its size and shape of that block which we are connecting so here from this earlier diagram we can define that the equilibrium position of the mass so here mass m uh that is the mass of the object is available that it, which is attached with the string while we released it due to its elongation oscillations will be generated after generated damping force it will settle out by the position o so here mass m is pulled down by that spring due to elongation and then by compressing it's a pushed up so here pulling and pushing process has been done which generates oscillations while that object moving from its mean position a uh, restoring force is developed onto the block due to that particular spring and that's why that spring force is generated which we have derived earlier that is fs equal to minus kx where x gives the amount of displacement carried out by that particular mass from its mean position so the total force acting on to the mass that is due to the spring force and that again due to damping force so total force that is a net result of two forces damping force and spring force by adding both value we are getting minus kx minus bb that minus kx is a spring force and minus bb that is 
dissipation force. Based on that force, acceleration will be generated onto the object. Let us calculate it for time t and follow the Newton's first law. That Newt sorry, Newton's second law. It gives F equal to m a. So let us substitute the value of F as m a. And on other side, we are having that minus k x minus b v. Now this displacement velocity and acceleration component are affecting or varying with respect to time. So let us take as a function of time and rewrite that equation as m a of t equal to minus k x of t minus b v of t. Now take the two times derivations of the same equation and we will get a derivative of x of t for v of t and a of t and we will get that equation m d square x y dt square so a can be written as dv by dt and velocity will be differentiated again so it gives a dx by dt ultimately we are getting acceleration in form of displacement that is d square x by dt square and velocity component v of t we are getting as a dx by dt so let us rewrite the whole equation in terms of displacement and we are getting that final equation m d square x by dt square plus b dx by dt plus kx that would be equal to 0. Uh, after the solution we are getting that x of t the displacement amount that is a e raised to minus b t divided by twice m into cos omega dash t plus phi. Here a is the amount of amplitude maximum displacement omega dash that is the angular frequency for that damped oscillator. So omega dash equal to under root k by m minus b square by 4 m square. The initial frequency we are having the constant frequency for the simple harmonic motion that we have defined as omega equal to under root k by m. Now this constant frequency gets reduced by the amount of b that positive constant of damped force that is the total frequency is reducing by the amount of b square by 4m square. So omega dash we are having under root of k by m minus b square by 4m square. This thing while we are defining in terms of diagram in the terms of waveform. So here damped oscillations are available periodic by decreasing its magnitude that will based on the damping force and the damping oscillations are generated eventually it will die out it will reduce to zero so here this is the function of the cosine we are taking by the amplitude is reducing maximum amplitude was a now that amplitude eventually reducing by the damping constant b with respect to time and that value we are having a e raised to minus bt by twice m and that amplitude decreases with time and gets zero at one point. So here, if we are focusing its total mechanical energy of damped simple harmonic motion, then undamped oscillator that will give you the total mechanical energy one half k s square. Now for the damped oscillator, that amplitude is depending on time and gradually, eventually it reduces. So for that damping, the amplitude we are having a e raised to minus bt by twice m. Let us substitute that value in mechanical energy. Instead of a square, we are supposed to write a square e raised to minus bt by m that 2, 2 will be cancelled out. So here the total energy of system also gets decreases exponentially with respect to time and small damping it means we are getting a dimensional less ratio that is a constant b by under root k m that must be less than 1 which gives you the small damping. Now if we are substituting the value of b as a 0 the damping constant 0 then this all damped oscillator equations can b give you the result of undamped oscillator. So b is the constant value of damped force. If it won't be available in the equation, 
then undamped oscillator equations can be defined. Now let us understand example for the same. For the damped oscillator as we have seen in the diagram, the mass M of the block is 200 gram, K equal to 90 Newton per meter and damping constant B is 40 gram per second. Calculate the period of oscillations, time taken for its amplitude of vibration to drop to half of its initial value and time taken for its mechanical energy to drop to half of its initial value. Right. So first that we need to calculate the time period of oscillations. We know the time period of oscillation t equal to 2 pi under root m by k. Right. So here k into m that we co that constant we require. So k is given in the example that is 90 Newton per meter. K is given that is a mass of object 200 gram. Let us convert into the kilogram that will give you the 0.2 kilogram. So K into M that product constant value we are getting 90 into 0.2 that is 18 kilogram Newton per meter. Now we want its under root form. So under root of Km that is a 4.243 into kilogram per second and B is given 40 gram per second convert into the kilogram per second so that would be rewrite in form of 0 0.04 kilogram per second so by comparing that b with the it's a constant value under root k m we able to get that b value is very much less than the under root k m so that we can say that that is a small damping function and that's why we can utilize that pendulum equation for time period t equal to 2 pi under root m by k. m is 0.2 kilogram, k is 19 newton per meter. By substituting those values, we are getting time period 0.3 second. Now, next we need to calculate that is the time required to reduce the amplitude by half. So here, ha, uh, so here what we can say that one equation we are having for x of t that is for the displacement amount for the damped oscillator that x of t equal to a e raised to minus bt by twice m cos omega dash t plus phi. Right. So from that we want a time that is one half for the amplitude to drop to its half value from its initial one. So here we are getting that equation t of 1 by 2 equal to natural log of 1 by 2 divided by b divided by twice m. By substituting those values, we are getting that time required to reduce the amplitude by half. That is a 6.93 second. Third thing we need to calculate to reduce its mechanical energy by half. That time duration we need to calculate. So for the calculating of the time of one half for its mechanical energy, we are taking its ratio that E of T by 1 by 2 to E of 0 that would be exponentially E raised to BT that T of 1 by 2 by M. Right. So here that mechanical energy gets reduced to half that would be equal to exponentially minus BT half uh, by M. So natural log of 1 by 2 that would be equal to minus bt half by m. Both the side we are taking natural log to remove the exponential function. So t by t into half, t half that we are getting 0 0.93 divided by 40 gram per second into 200 gram. That will give you 3.46 second. So after 3.46 second it's a total and mechanical energy will reduce to half value from its original value. So here, this is just the half of the period of for amplitude we have calculating. That energy depends on the square of the amplitude. So it is reducing exponentially, not linearly. Now the next thing that we need to understand, forced oscillations and resonance. Initially, free oscillations have defined in which the system is displaced from its mean position and it is released based on that it generates a restoring force and oscillations will be generated with its constant frequency natural frequency omega 
these all free oscillations are uh, eventually reduced and die out due to the damping forces present in the surroundings. So here, an external agency or, ex or external component which can maintain the oscillations with its uh, given driven frequency omega d, which is known as a driven oscillations or forced oscillations. So this an external force f of t by its amplitude f0 that varies periodically with the time to damp this oscillator and that force we can say f of t equal to f0 cos omega d into t. So the motion of the particle under the combined action of linear restoring force, damping force and a time which is depending on the driven force. So f of t equal to restoring force minus kx plus damping force which is minus bv plus the driving force that is we have just given f0 cos omega d into t. So that total net force which is affecting onto the particle at a particular time the combined effect will be present. So here that force based on the Newton second law can be defined as M A. So M A of T equal to minus K X of T minus B V of T plus M zero cos omega D into T. Now rewrite the whole equation in terms of X of T the single variable. So V of T equal to dx by dt, A of T that is dv by dt and that velocity again will be differentiated that uh, uh, dx by dt. By mentioning that A is defined as a dx d square x by dt square, V defined as a dx by dt. So here that equation we are taking left side and the constant we are keeping on another side onto the right side. So the equation we are getting m d square x by dt square plus b dx by dt plus kx equal to f0 cos omega d into t. This is the equation we are having of an oscillator having a mass m on which the periodic force or the angular frequency vd, uh, angular frequency omega d which is a uh, driven frequency is applied. Now this oscillator initially oscillating with its constant natural frequency, simple harmonic frequency omega. Then we apply the external force, driven force, then oscillations with the natural frequency will die out and the object is oscillate with externally given force with its angular frequency. So the displacement occurs after natural frequency will die out can be defined as x of t equal to a cos omega dt plus phi. Here t is the time required from the moment we apply uh, the external periodic force. So the amplitude a that is a function of forced frequency and the natural frequency that we are getting a equal to f0 divided by m square under root of m square into omega square minus omega d square of whole square plus omega d square into b square and phi equal to 10 inverse minus v0 divided by vd x0. Here m is the mass of the particle, v0 is the uh, velocity of the particle at time t equal to 0 x0 is the displacement of the particle at time t equals to 0 and that is the moment when we apply the periodic force which is defined as a time t equal to 0. So this equation shows that amplitude of the force oscillator which is depending on angular frequency of that given driving force. Now this damping force we can define for small damping driving frequency from its natural frequency over which we are doing the comparison of that amplitude where omega db which is much smaller than m omega square minus vd square and we are neglecting that another term from the amplitude and we are getting final amplitude a equal to f0 divided by m omega square minus d square. 
so here due to that is smaller damping we are if we draw its amplitude and uh, frequency ratio graphical representation so from this graph we are saying that we are getting a maximum amplitude at the center where the omega d by omega equal to 1 means at the natural frequency we are getting a maximum amplitude whatever the b constant value the damping constant value would be available in all these three different value of the damping constant b in all the cases we are getting maximum amplitude at natural frequency only in the rest of the frequencies it amplitudes continuously gradually eventually reduces for the smaller damping we are getting a uh, highest or the taller and narrower range of amplitude at the resonance peak which is known as resonance where we are getting damping frequency equal to natural frequency that is omega d by omega equal to 1 now let us define the driving frequency close to its natural frequency so omega d into b that will be very much uh, omega d is very closer to omega then omega d into b which is higher than m omega square minus omega d square so resultant amplitude we are getting a equal to f0 by omega d t so here the maximum possible amplitude we are getting by the driving frequency and it's a damping constant it can never goes infinity so here this is what the resonance component we are saying where this is the phenomena to increase the amplitude when it's a driving force is closer or near to its natural frequency of oscillator is it clear here we are going to end the session with that we are going to end the chapter hope you understood thoroughly thank you